Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're having a bit more of a theory session. The pike season is upon us, or rather the unofficial pike season, we're now in October. And I thought maybe it would be a good idea to start taking a look at different rigs and different presentations of dead baits underwater to see exactly what happens and what goes on down there. So today we're looking at one of the most popular setups that people use for dead baiting for pike, and that is the float ledger rig. Now I've done it almost to the books as best as I can do um, to hopefully be able to aid people in the way they fish or just to be able to see exactly what goes on under the water, see just how many fish ignore your bait, which is gonna be a prominent thing in this video as I've already filmed it. And hopefully we'll be able to take something away from this. So down to the specifics of the rig. I'm using a relatively small cigar float. I'm fishing at close range on a canal, low wind conditions. I don't need a super visible float. Braid wise, I'm using very heavy braid on the de this dead bait setup in particular, 60 pound braid. Um, going down to, right, now lots of people use heavy leads for dead baiting uh, when using float ledger, because obviously you don't want the lead to move when the fish picks up your bait. But with the canal being super silty, I can't go too heavy or my lead's gonna go right down into the silt and stop the bite indication. So I'm fishing a two and a half ounce lead on a large run ring to enable the line to pull through freely, obviously free running. Then I'm fishing a wire trace without any hooks on. Obviously this is the theory session we're doing today. So a standard trace as recommended on the Pike Angling Club um, recommends that on a float ledger rig, you fish a 45 centimeter trace minimum. So I've got roughly a 30 plus centimeter piece of wire, which I've attached a clip on the end, which I'm just literally pushing into the tail of the dead bait. Because obviously if I had the hooks on there, that'd probably make it about 40 to 45 centimeters. So roughly, this is a trace that is recommended for this style of fishing. So hopefully everything is by the books and we get to see exactly what happens when the fish takes a bait on a float ledger rig. We've got the camera positioned on the bottom, as well as having the camera positioned on the bank pointing at the float to match up the footage to the millisecond. So the moment that fish picks up the bait, you get to see what kind of indication you get on the float and exactly how much it takes to be able to get an indication too. So let's crack on, get a bait in the water, the camera in the water and see what goes on down there. The baits that I'm using are all freshwater, roach and rud, sized between six to eight inches on average. So I did a relatively long amount of filming before actually getting any proper solid takes or indications, or indeed fish properly taking the bait and me having to pull the bait out of the mouth. What we got is a lot of attention though. It was amazing just how many fish, or just how many times the same fish can actually come and look at your bait on the bottom. And at one point I had a very inquisitive young pike, probably about three pound in size, but actually came over to the camera to investigate and took a little bite out the top of the camera, which I thought was really interesting. Obviously the camera down there is emitting a small amount of heat. I've got no lights on the camera. Um, there's no movement, there's no sound, but there is a small amount of heat. And I don't know whether that is what attracted the pike to go over and have a look and investigate, but that was quite a common thing. I didn't always capture it on camera, but even just behind the camera, the pike were coming in and coming right up to it. Some of these pike circled the baited area four, five, six times. Often they would come down to the bait, have a look. Sometimes they'd have a little nibble or nudge the bait before lifting up, swimming off again, before coming back round. And a lot of times they did this over the course of maybe five to 10 minutes, maybe a bit longer. But almost always they would eventually just move away and not come back and that would be it. What I did find was a constant thing that kept bringing the pike back over to the bait when it seemed like they'd lost interest was to twitch it, twitching the bait. And it's something a lot of us pike anglers do, especially as dead baiters. Um, it's something that is quite common. You'll find that if your bait's been sat for a long time with no movement, no touches, the moment you reel your bait back a little bit or reel it back a foot and then leave it, sometimes that can trigger a take. And that seems to be what happened a lot during this filming process. In fact, you can see in this clip right here, the pike is sat just off the corner of the shot. And the moment I start twitching that bait back just a few inches, the pike does a full 360, turns round, and goes straight down to that bait.
But what's really interesting about this clip is I captured some of some water that I didn't actually intend on capturing this session. The pike was showing a lot of interest to that bait. It actually picked it up, spat it out, it flew off camera. And when the pike was off camera, it was actually gnawing on that bait. And then something happened. Something appeared out the corner of my eye that I didn't expect. And that was a canal barge. I don't know how many people have filmed canal barges coming overhead from beneath the surface. But I found that quite interesting. As you can see, the pike did not hesitate to get out the way of that barge coming. Thankfully, I did not lose the camera though. And at this point now, it was time to actually get a fish to take that bait completely and to film the float moving at the same time as well. I had to wait roughly about 20 minutes after the boat had gone for the water to clear. And then it was time to get that bait back out there. And it did not take long after that bait hit the bottom before we got some action. I've heard so many times people in pike angling say either wait a certain amount of seconds before you strike or wait until the fish starts moving away with your bait to set the hook. This is one of them times where the moment that float indicated the hook could have been set and that fish was hooked. Leaving that fish for any amount of time would result in a deep hooked fish. This is the reason why I didn't put hooks in the bait. I wanted to be able to see how long it took for the pike to start ingesting that bait um, in correlation to how much movement you get actually on the float. And what you can actually see is you don't get that much movement when the fish initially takes your bait. Very small twitches. Even though that pike hammered the bait, the float hardly moved. Because when you think about it, you've got a relatively long trace and the fish needs to pull all the slack and then start pulling your actual braid down to the lead for that float to cock up and start drifting down. Ideally, you could have, I could have struck then on the first twitch and got a hook up. No problem. And it actually would have been both hooks inside the pike's mouth too. Now that footage wasn't enough, we got the footage of that pike taking the bait, but I wanted at least one more. It was taking a lot of time to get this footage and a lot of effort. So if you guys want to subscribe, feel free. I'm going to be doing more footage like this coming up. And make sure to leave a like and share the video too if you're enjoying it. So now it's time to get another take. I needed a bigger pike. That fish was roughly around about four pound in size. The bait I was using roughly around about six inches. I was going to use a bait of roughly around the same size, six, seven inches, but we're going to try and look for a bigger pike. And we did. I managed to find a pike that was around about six or seven pound in size. And after a few passes and a few looks at the bait, it did eventually come down and we got our second proper take of the session. Now this pike, even though it was larger, was a little bit more hesitant on eating the bait. It didn't wolf it down straight away like that first one. It did pick up the bait and was chewing on it. But, as you could see, if you were fishing a bog standard, double treble hooked rig, the moment that fish picked up the bait, there would be like a 90% chance that there'd be a hook in that fish's mouth. And I bet you, if I'd have struck straight away the moment that fish had picked up and had the hooks in, I would have hooked up to that fish. This is the thing, if you're using a conventional 
double treble rig that most park anglers use, I'm going to say probably a good 80% of dead baiters use, then you could get a hookup the moment you get a twitch on that float, which I'm hopefully going to prove at the end of this video. But yeah, that fish picked up the bait, very little movement again. This fish, a slightly bigger fish, a bit slower fish, and did start moving off and slowly drag that float under, as you could tell by the footage, and obviously gave that fish a free meal. During the course of filming these takes without having the hooks in, it was amazing just how many fish touched the bait, uh, grabbed the bait, just nipped at the bait, even picked it up sometimes, and showed absolutely no movement on the float whatsoever. <laughs> Like the amount of fish that came in and nudged the bait and you didn't get any indication. And if the water wasn't clear, you would just think you'd gone had a session where you'd had no action. Maybe there was no fish there. When in fact there was, they're just very, very smart and very curious and very inquisitive, which we've obviously seen throughout the video. We've had pike nibbling the camera. I've had pike coming up watching the flow. Really interesting behavior. When they come up and watch the float, I actually think it's because the oils are coming out of the fish. And obviously, because oil and water doesn't mix, when the fish oils come out, they go straight up. And I think the fish were following the scent of the fish oils and, and seeing the float on the surface and getting distracted and maybe thinking that that was a fish too. It happened multiple times in the video. At least three or four times, I had pike going up and staring at the float on the surface as opposed to the dead bait. Um, some people may look at that and think, stupid fish, but... At the end of the day, I think it is just something to do with the scent trails going up and seeing that silhouette and wondering what it is. But now we reach the end of the video and I couldn't leave this video without catching you a pike. So I'm going to go to an area now where I've been filming these fish. I'm going to go out there with a dead bait. And what we're going to do is, the moment we get a bit of indication on the float, a couple of little twitches to tell us that a fish has picked up the bait, we're just going to set the hook. We're not waiting. We're not waiting 10 seconds. We're not waiting for the float to start drifting off down the canal. We're just going to set the hook straight away and see what happens. Standard double treble rig, one hook point in the tail, one hook point just down the back of the fish, and we're going to see exactly what happens. Let's go try it out now. The moment that float moves, we're going to set the hook. Yep, there we go, there's a twitch. Yep, let's go for it. Yes, fish on, fish on. We did not need to wait for that strike. So a few small twitches, I knew that fish must have picked up the bait. That's how we like it. I believe that's the same fish that I filmed underwater yesterday. I recognize it. That's what I wanted to see. Knock my lead off. Beautiful fish. Let's get it on the grass here to unhook it very quickly. Look at that, just one hook point in the mouth. Like I say, the moment the fish picks up that bait, there will be a hook point, if you're using double treble rig, there will be a hook point in that fish's mouth the moment it grabs your bait. Nine times out of ten anyway, if it's a decent sized fish. There we go. Alright, let's take a look at it. The water's clear, I could see what was going on anyway, but waited to see those first two twitches. Picked up the rod, set the hook, single hook point, right in the scissor. Didn't need to wait for that. Right, let's get this one back. What a gorgeous fish to end off this wonderful video. So guys, I think that brings us to the end of our session. I hope you guys have been able to take away something from this video. I sure have. I didn't realize quite how much time it took to get a decent indication after a fish picked up the bait. Obviously, the fish have to move that wire trace, but I didn't realize just how much they have to move it to get a positive indication on the float. And it was interesting to see the differences in how pike take the bait. One of them absolutely smashed it and gulfed the whole thing in one bite. And it was only a small fish, about four pound. And then we had one, maybe six or seven, maybe a bit bigger fish, pick up the same size bait and take the time with it. But still, would have got an instant hook up on the twitch. And then right at the end, managed to get that pike, straight away set the hook within two seconds of noticing the twitch and got a solid hook up to that fish. If you want me to do any other kind of filming like this, looking at different rigs underwater, let me know, I'm gonna give it a go. Obviously we're heading towards predator season, so pike and perch. I've really enjoyed doing this video. If you liked it, don't forget to share it around because I think other people might find it quite interesting too. And I'll catch you guys later.